Hello, everybody. Welcome to Monster Killer Thriller 11. The Halloween special lives on. I'm your ghoulish host, Mark Fusco, and I'm excited to continue my Halloween specials on WWTV. Horatio is back too. Okay, so the name of the skull in Shakespeare is Yorick, but hey, I've been calling this guy Horatio for 11 years, so it, it's kind of stuck. First, let's take this mask off. <laughs> anyway, first, I highly suggest that if you don't want the real Grim Reaper to stop by, please celebrate Halloween this year safely. If that means just you and your immediate family at the house, then just do that. Tonight's theme is Back to Basics. With each wine under $15, I'm also pairing some candies with these wines. Some may work, some may not. I did get a bit fancy on some of the candy. The thinking is that most of these candies aren't really for trick-or-treaters or for a large party. These pairings should work for a fun evening at home. Maybe watch some scary movies or maybe even some Rocky Horror. The wines should be better than cheap party wines and in that everyday drinker category. All the wines and candy were bought at the main supermarket here in San Antonio known as HEB. Most of the wines are probably widely available and some of the candy may only be available at some higher end, especially grocery stores. Uh, okay, let's get started with our first pairing. All righty. Our first wine is the 2018 Apothic White Winemaker's Blend. What's the blend? No clue. They don't say. Uh, does Winemaker's Blend mean anything really? No, not legally. It's the only white wine they make, <clears throat> so it's probably a varying group of white grapes each year. It's listed as semi-sweet on the website. I didn't see anything on the bottle to indicate sweetness, but it's 12% alcohol from Cali, so they either picked early to keep sugar low or picked at a normal bricks and then stopped fermentation to retain some sugar. And by keeping the sugar low, the sugar, low sugar means low alcohol. But they probably arrested fermentation just to keep some residual sugar. You know, we'll find out in a bit. It was $7.97, so it's a value price wine. So why this wine? Well, the word apothic isn't particularly Halloween-y. The word itself just means warehouse, honestly. Storeroom, warehouse, it's an old Latin word. On the, website, they explain, they, on the website, they explain the origin this way. Inspired by Apotheca, a mysterious place where some of the earliest wine was blended and stored, Apothic crafts a line of bold and intriguing wines with a hint of mischief. So there's mystery, so that's kind of Halloween-y. It also sounds like Gothic and those crazy Goths, you know, the modern kind, they live for Halloween. The label's kind of Gothic too, uh, somehow this wine has become associated with Halloween, at least it has for me. So what am I going to pair it with? Gummy Bears and Jelly Belly Tropical Mixed Jelly Beans. The Gummy Bears were $1.25 for the pack and the Jelly Beans were $1.67 for the pack. I hope that fake coffin things work in here. I'm not really sure how it's going to work out, but hey, it's something different. Anyway, <laughs> these candies are sweet, but not terribly sweet. Um, a lot of times this pairing may not be the best. But I chose the wine as a Halloween themed wine and not necessarily thinking about what the pairing was going to be. So let's check it all out. Alrighty. Horatio, how you doing? I know, York. Let me show you all my equipment here. Screw cap. I love screw cap. Right, we're gonna do the wine first, and then we'll do the wine pairing. So right off the bat, um, pretty aromatic. <clears throat> so definitely youthful. It's a 2018, so I mean, it should be pretty youthful. 
I get uh, kind of the typical orange tangerine type of citrus on it. There's a peach skin, a little bit of peach, <clears throat> a little bit of white flowers. There's a, a bitterness of, of some sort. Mainly I'm associated that with like the peach skin, kind of the fuzziness of it. Let's check it out. So it's definitely a little bit sweet, but the acid has been retained. So it's like biting into a somewhat sweet orange and lemon at the same time. There's, there's, there's a, actually a pretty fair amount of acidity to this. So they probably picked a little early, but not too terribly early at 12% alcohol. And they retained the freshness of the acid, of the acidity, arrested the fermentation to retain a little bit of sugar to kind of help balance the acid. And, and they literally could have added some sugar to it. The United States, you can, well, in a lot of places, but in the New World especially, you can, you can chaptalize, but chaptalization is usually to give you extra alcohol, not to give you sweetness. But yeah, but in this case, I'm pretty sure it's just that they left the residual sugar in there. They didn't actually add any sugar. It's a pleasant, easy to drink wine. If you're going to be watching, you know, a movie and you want something to, to kind of drink with it, um, this wine would work with it. It's, is it the most complex wine? No. Is it easy to drink? Yeah. Does it have a delicious factor? Absolutely. It's $8. We're not talking Grand Cru Burgundy here. Um, we're talking entry level value priced wine that may or may not be your style. Um, I kind of like it, but there's a bit of sugar to it, so I'm a little bit impressed because I wasn't expecting a whole lot, but, you know, judging books by their cover and all that, I've had some of the red wines in the past and they seem to be really too sweet for me. This one seems to have a balance to the sweetness and the fruit uh, that, that's ripe and the acidity. The acidity is really, really bright. It might be a little too acidic. I wouldn't say this wine is totally imbalanced but there's a balance with this. It's, it's, I'm not gonna equate it to Riesling, but there's a balance with the sweetness and the acidity that you'll get in some pretty decent Rieslings. Okay, so speaking of Rieslings, let's go to a German company. All right, so this is the Haribo Gold Bears Gummy Bears. This is the the, basically the ones that everybody knows. A variety of, ooh, wow, you can really smell those. A variety of different flavors. Um, we'll go with, I don't know what the clear one's supposed to be, but we'll try that one first. There's kind of a pineapple. Also helps them. I just pineapple. I've never really evaluated the actual flavors of gummy bears, but the fruits on the label kind of help you out, and it's kind of pineapple-y. So that might actually go really well with this. It it works. It works as a pairing. You know these these gummy bears aren't sickly sweet, and that was my hope when I did decided on what I was going to pair with this white wine because. The back label doesn't tell you anything. I mean, it tells you kind of here. I, I briefly looked at the back label. I was really looking to see if it said sweet or not, and it doesn't really say sweet, but in really bigger fonts and more easy to read, or easier to read, uh, are the words refreshing, bright, vibrant, and crisp. The word crisp, crisp means acidic. And so I was a little worried that it might be tart. It might come across as tart and maybe a little bit of bitter if I compared it with something that was too, too sweet. 
but I figured do something that's kind of light and it would work. And it does. So we got a whole bunch of different colors. So let's got an orange color, got a yellow color, got a green color and a red color. I think those are all the colors. So I'm certain this is probably this is cherry, orange, is probably orange. This is probably like lime. Well, this is probably strawberry or red berry. As soon as I see a strawberry, I see a raspberry on there. I don't see anything that's necessarily green, but it's probably something like apple. And then we have the yellow and the orange. Orange, probably orange and the yellow is, I don't know, maybe it's more pineapple. So let's go through the colors in what I think would be the reverse order of what you would try it. So this is the yellow. It's lemon. I didn't really get any lemon off of this, but it works. All right, orange, probably the orange. Orange, oh wow, it's like very tang-like. Okay, that's pretty decent. Green, probably green apple or lime maybe. Kind of like a sweet green apple. And then the last one, just red berry. So this probably won't be a really good pairing. A little bit of conflict there, but I mean, in general, it works. Gummy bears and at least this white wine really do work. So let's let's do the jelly beans. And the reason I did like two different candies was I was, I didn't know what to expect, especially on the white wine. So I was like, let me get two candies. And in case one doesn't work, the other might. So this is a tropical mix. Um, so on the back, it, it gives you, there's like a ton of flavor. I'm not gonna do each, well, I'm not gonna do each one of these. We have berry blue, cantaloupe, coconut, which I'm definitely not gonna try. I hate coconut. Uh, crushed pineapple, uh, sun-kissed lemon, I think is what it says. It's kind of hard for me to read some of these. Kiwi, um, island punch, green apple, lemon lime, mango, peach, pina colada, another one I probably won't like. Top, something, this is top banana, Trop, probably tropical banana. Top banana, sun-kissed tangerine, I'm guessing sun-kissed as in like, because it's the brand, when you used to have the little trademark on it, so they probably partnered with Sunkist. Strawberry daiquiri and Sunkist pink grapefruit. So I'm just gonna kind of randomly get a couple of these and I might get the coconut or the pina colada by accident, but. Hmm, that's tasty. All right, you know what I'm doing? I'm just gonna put a bunch in my mouth. Oh, there's the key. There's the um, kiwi. On a side note, jelly beans are probably a great way to really reinforce a lot of fruit type flavors they're over the top so you actually taste them but it helps reinforce it so yeah really tropical mix i think it'll be a really good pairing it works but the jelly beans are a little bit sweeter than the, than the gummy bears so there's a bit of a conflict there the wine isn't quite sweet enough and so it comes across as a little bitter but you know, as the pairing goes, it works for the most part. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. Okay, success. As you can see, I don't have the spit bucket because it's Halloween. I never spit on Halloween.
All right, next up, a callback in some ways to my video wine review origins. So let's pull the next wine. <laughs> all righty. So our next wine is the 2018 Noble Vines 667 <laughs> Pinot Noir. And then we have the pairing here, the Ghirardelli Chocolate Intense Dark Cherry Tango. and the Brookside dark chocolate pomegranate flavor. So this wine is from the same people that make 337 Cab, which was my initial inspiration for a wine show name. This is a legitimate Pinot Noir clone, part of the Dijon clones. So a bit of a play on the number of the beast for me. It's from Monterey, California. I'm kind of excited about this as I had another Monterey Pinot a few days ago and it was really good. I was really pleased with it. Monterey is a cooler climate area that does really well with Pinot. And I'm a fan of another cool climate area uh, in California named Anderson Valley. That's north of Sonoma. So if Monterey can be another option, I'm all for it. I paid $11.02 uh, for this one. So they say that this clone is more tannic and has a deeper color than others. They do a cold soak for up to four days, which helps uh, get some good color extraction. Given the style of what 337 is, I kind of expect this to be a fairly fruity wine. The candies I chose are both chocolate based. I went a bit fancy here. Since Pinot Noir is typically dominated by cherry and I expect the cherry in this wine to be pretty ripe, I got the Ghirardelli, the, I got the Ghirardelli Intense Dark Chocolate or Dark Cherry. So the candies I chose are both chocolate based. I went a bit fancy here. Since Pinot Noir is typically dominated by cherry, I expect the cherry in this wine to be pretty ripe. So I got this Ghirardelli Intense Dark Cherry Tango Chocolate. Uh, it has cherry and almonds in it too. Uh, paid two fifty dollars for it. The other candy, like I already said, the Brookside Pomegranate is a dark chocolate and pomegranate. The combo seems to be a good choice for Cali Pino, and I paid $3.58 for it. Now, if you know your Greek mythology, then you know what that the pomegranate is prominent in the story of Persephone, also known as Proserpina to the Romans. She's the daughter of Zeus and Demeter and became the queen of the underworld. She was kidnapped by Hades. And she represents the spring because every spring she gets to leave the underworld to visit the earth. The pomegranate associated with her because Hades tricked her by giving her some pomegranate seeds to eat. Now, since the pomegranate is considered a food of the underworld, Persephone has to return to the underworld for three months out of the year. Now, I know there's some other myths that talk about like she ate three seeds, that's why it's three months, but I've also remember, and I couldn't find it, that it was six seeds and she's gone for six months out of the year, but three months makes a little more sense because she's here from spring until harvest. All right, so let's check out the pairing. First, the wine. Whoa, easy there, killer. <laughs> or killed. A little residual apothic in there. So I don't expect this wine to be really sweet, like, or as sweet tasting as the 337 cab, but I do expect it to be pretty ripe on the fruit. So on the nose, there's actually, and it may be because I know I'm gonna have some chocolate with it, but there's definitely a, a dark chocolate aroma to it. Also kind of a roasted coffee. When it comes to color, 
and it's not the best lighting and all that. It isn't really deep colored. Like, it's not like cab, deep intensity. You can see through it. That's a great sign. There are some California cabs out there that look like Syrah. Well, I mean, taste like Syrah. I mean, uh, yeah, they're not see-through. And this one you can actually pretty much see through. Though it's definitely a little bit more intense, but I've had Pinots from Burgundy that are similar in color. I mean, actually looking down, you can, it's, it's, it's definitely somewhat translucent. So I don't want to harp on the color of Pinot, but there's a lot of California Pinots out there that are correct like this, or actually even more see-through, but there's a few well-known Pinots out there at different price points that you really can't see through. There's a touch of smokiness to it. A bit of bramble. It's really not fruit forward on the nose. But I would say there's definitely cherry on it and it's somewhat drier. And then raspberry black, a little bit of blackberry, but more raspberry on it, a touch of strawberry. So more red fruited. Let's check it out. Definitely a dry wine. The fruit is ripe, but it's not super ripe. So I was expecting this to be a little bit more ripe on the attack with the fruit. It's a touch bitter, not super bitter. Um, I don't know what the alcohol is off the top of my head, but it does feel like it's got a decent amount of alcohol. Let's see if I can find it real quick. It is 14 five not not unusual for wine to be 14.5 from california as cali pinos go there's a lot of people that will like it this is not my preferred style of pinot even though it is from Cali. Um, it's not over the top and like really jammy and fruity. But, and realize I got this for the name, the 667 instead of the triple six. Uh, not necessarily because I thought it was gonna be like a kind of a sweet tasting Pinot. If I'd done that, I would have gone with some other ones out there that I know have a decent amount of residual sugar in there. Speaking of that, I found that there's this wine shop uh, out of Canada that lists the RS of whatever wine they sell. I need to contact him because I don't know how accurate that is, but I'm assuming it's pretty accurate. But considering these are the wines that they, it's every wine that they sell, that at least the ones I looked at. And some of these wines you're like, there's no way that they, I don't know how they got, this, I don't know how they got the information, but that information is not on the website for some of these wines because there is a significant, and I do mean, like say eight, nine, 10 grams of residual sugar left in these, bo in these wines. And that's sweet, even though we think of them as dry. All right, so let's check out the Ghirardelli. Ghirardelli. That is definitely tasty. Dark, that dark, dark chocolate. But it's not super bitter. It's definitely some, some sweetness to it. Then the cherry came through. And then the almond was kind of like, like a sprinkling some almond on top. I could totally do it without the almonds. But I figured it might be a good balancing act. I mean... This is one of those things where the, the chocolate is a little bit bitter and the wine isn't super sweet or super ripe in fruit. So the pairing isn't the best pairing, but each on their own is what they are. I, I like the chocolate, really. I really like the chocolate. Let's break off another piece.
I mean, if you have a bit of the chocolate in your mouth when you're drinking the wine, it helps sweeten up the wine. Red wine and chocolate in general is not a good pairing. Port, Ruby Port is a red wine, but it has significant sugar in it and alcohol. So it pairs well with sweet stuff like chocolate. But if you have a bit of chocolate still in your mouth, it helps really sweeten up the, the wine, it accentuates the cherry in the wine. The roasted coffee I got on the nose isn't so much on the palate, but the almonds help add to that roasted quality to the wine. So it works, but maybe not for everybody. Now let's get into the Brook side. Hang out with hang out with Persephone a little bit because she should be going back to uh, Hades here in any, any minute now since it's the 22nd of October and harvest from most places is pretty much done. So again, dark chocolate. So dark chocolate tends to have some bitterness to it. I think in some ways this pairing is a little bit better. It's about the same sweetness level as a Ghirardelli. But I like the little, little contrast in flavor. It's an okay pairing. Each on their own is totally fine. The wine on its own is totally fine. The candies are great. They're also not inexpensive. So these are, you know, I like I like them separately. I like the candies better. I mean, the wine is okay, and I'll definitely drink the rest of it, but I'll probably make sure I pair it with maybe more, more like a regular food than necessarily candy. But I'll, I'll admit, I'll drink red wine and eat chocolate or have chocolate ice cream or chocolate anyway because we've gotten used to that type of pairing as, as a society and it, sometimes it works really well and sometimes it's just kind of like oh it's not a bitterness going on but you know what i embrace the bitterness because sometimes i can be a little bitter though i don't present that personality on camera or really to a lot of people honestly because i'm always outstanding all right so let's uh Let's go on to our last pairing of the evening. <laughs> so let me get the coffin real quick and we'll reveal the last one. All righty. So on this one, we have the 2018 Rutherford Ranch Predator Cabernet Sauvignon. This comes from Lodi, California. The pairing, one of my favorites, Milk Duds. And then something else kind of fancy. This is the Lint Lindor. And honestly, I think, I guess Lint is the brand and Lindor is the style. I really don't know much about this. It's the Fudge Swirl. Um, irresistibly smooth Fudge Swirl Milk Chocolate Truffles. I paid $13.98 for it, so it's the most expensive of the group. And, ooh, Predator. That's scary, right? Remember Juggernaut from last year? Yeah. Uh, wait, wait there, there's a, what's this on the label? A ladybug? The label says, what's good for the, what's good for the vine is good for the wine. What the heck does that mean? Well, glad you asked. Okay, so as far as the phrase, it does make a little bit of sense, but ladybugs. They're kind of a double-edged sword. Uh, in the vineyard, they are mostly a good thing. They are a predator. Aha. To many insects and aphids, these are different from what's known as the Asian lady beetles. And ladybugs are a different type of beetle also. But the Asian version is a pest in the vineyard, so an infestation can spell disaster for the wines. Okay, so ladybugs are good then. Yes, to a point, as long as they aren't on the grapes during harvest, then we're all good. If they are with the grapes though, it can spell disaster for the wine. 
let's get into how the sausage is made with wines. <clears throat> There's a term called MOG or M-O-G. That stands for material other than grapes. Uh, not to gross you out or anything, but it's common for other things to get in with the grapes and get crushed. Wineries do their best to keep out all the big stuff, you know, like leaves and branches and rocks and things like that, but smaller things might get through. But really what's left over is, has really a negligible effect on the wine, though the ladybug is an exception. Now, earlier this century, kind of funny to say that now, but we're in 2020, so we've had 20 years of the century so far, it was surmised that ladybugs can impart a pyrazinic aroma or flavor to a wine. In some wines, it's expected because the grapes have the right stuff to end up with flavors of like bell pepper. Pinot isn't one of them. Uh, so, and the reason I mentioned Pinot is that it's thought that ladybugs are the culprit of the 2004 vintage of red burgundy having an almost universal pyrazine taint. So it's also known as ladybug taint. So yeah, a ladybug can be a good sign of a good harvest because you're gonna get rid of a lot of your pests, but just make sure it's not in the wine. All right, so the candies. So while the last wine's candy could work with this wine and probably is a better pairing, um, and these wines, might work with the other one, but probably not. I think Cabernet demands a sturdier type of candy. So I've already mentioned this is one of my favorite candies, Milk Does. I always eat this at the theater, especially during previews. I uh, paid 98 cents for it. Uh, then I looked for another chocolate that didn't have caramel in it, because a ton of them had caramel. And I got this one with the fudge. So a fudge and milk chocolate combo, and I paid 3.98 for it. So of, the, of these candies, it's the most expensive of the candies. So let's get into the pairing. He has a ladybug on the capsule there. So I remember going to Bordeaux in 2011 and it was during harvest and when I went to Chateau Fon Roque, I've, I've tried to be all fancy, Fon Roque, Alan Moix, who is related to Christian Moix, who's like the big, everybody knows with some really awesome right bank wines. Anyway, uh, he showed me some ladybugs and he was explaining why ladybugs were good in the vineyard. And I don't really remember too much of that conversation because it was really overwhelming. It was my first like real trip. Not that my trips to the Texas wineries earlier that year weren't real, but this was like intense and I'm learning about biodynamics and all that. So he was really happy to see the ladybugs. And I don't remember if he talked about ladybug taint at the time, but he was happy to see them. He was like, don't like, he wasn't going to like kill them or anything like that. He didn't, he didn't do them as a pest. So, Definitely an intensity of fruit. You can actually smell chocolate on this. So my buddy Ian, you definitely will not like this wine. He, he, I have a friend of mine that does not really like desserts and sweets. And if a wine has a prominent chocolate aroma or flavor, he, he's get, he gets turned off by it. Kind of like me in coffee. If, it, if there's a lot of roasted coffee, especially on the, on the palate, on the nose, not so much, but I kind of get a little, ugh, because I'm like, uh, I'm gonna cringe, I'm gonna taste coffee. But for him, it's chocolate. So yeah, the other the other candies would be really good with this because I'm not saying I smell pomegranate, but I smell a lot of red fruit to it, and it's ripe. It's definitely ripe in nature. It smells sweet. There's vanilla, there's, there's definitely more influence with the oak, whereas the other wine, while it was aged in French and American oak, which I didn't mention, it's probably not prominent. And considering the price point of that wine, if there is French oak, it's probably really minimal because French oak is stupid expensive. And I won't get into oak alternatives, but it's probably more oak alternatives or a mixture of real oak barrels that might be new and oak alternatives. 
this one, considering Rutherford Ranch, there could be some real oak involved here, but there might be some oak alternatives. I mean, this is an under $15 bottle of wine. I know, a little more how the sausage is made, but at the bottom line, if the wine tastes good, drink it. So there's a, there's a touch of little smokiness to it. Um, confectionery. There's a richness of fruit, a ripeness of fruit, and kind of a darkness to it. <laughs> Sorry. On the flavor, it tastes right. A lot of people will kind of consider it sweet, and there might be a little bit of elevated residual sugar. If I remember, which is my way to tell myself when I edit, if I remember, maybe I'll go to that website in Canada and see if I can get the RS for all these wines, assuming they sell them. And, and I'll be honest, there's also a little bit of a bug spray smell to it. And I hate, I usually just say chemical. <clears throat> and I, I feel like I'm the only one in the world that ever smells this stuff. But I don't know how else to describe it. I usually use roasted coffee as my code for it. But sometimes it really does smell like roasted coffee. Because I'll smell these things and people go, oh, I smell roasted coffee. I'm like, oh, maybe that's what I'm smelling is roasted coffee. So... And I, the chemical or bug spray, I don't mean it in a negative way. It's just there's an extra aroma to it. And it's really subtle. It doesn't come through in the palate bite at all. Now, while the fruit is definitely ripe and it comes through in that sweeter style, there's a touch of tartness to it. It's like a, not quite a sweet tart, but there's a touch of tart and, and ripe with the fruit. It's totally red fruit dominated. Raspberry, um, cherry, strawberry, but there's also the blackberry and black raspberry to it. So you have red and black fruits, which is what it's supposed to have, which is it's at least 85% caps. This is Lodi. Um, so there's definitely um, a richness and a uh, kind of sweetness of fruit. Fruits are very prominent in it. There's also, on the palate, the chocolate isn't as noticeable, but it's kind of like eating like one of those chocolate pomegranate things or that chocolate cherry stuff. So in some ways, those wines, those fruits, those candies are probably a better pairing, but let's get into, let's get into the milk duds. On the receipt, it says theater box, because this is basically what you get in theater. So I'll do one because these things, you get, it takes a while to chew, right? I know I've had milk duds in the past on the show too. Can't remember which year, but it was a few years ago. So as a pairing, it's more about the milk chocolate, not necessarily the caramel, but it works. Actually, it really works because it's like having a cherry caramel milk chocolate candy with some blackberry and stuff like that in it, like some compote and stuff like that. That's a really, that's really good. I'm probably going to go back to one of those other candies just to check it out real quick. Now these truffles they're individually wrapped kids make sure if you're getting this stuff don't get loose milk duds if you're trick-or-treating though i really doubt there's gonna be a lot of trick-or-treating this year i don't know we may see a lot of people trick-or-treat because i i won't get into all that but just be safe mm. Mm. So on the label, it's like liquid chocolate, and that's what's inside. Which is why I think they call it truffle. I'm not an expert when it comes to candy, but yeah. Wow, that's really, 
it's easily my favorite candy of all of them. I mean, I love Milk Duds. Milk Duds is one of my favorite candies of all time, but it's really good. Now, how does it pair with the wine? It's good, but it's so sweet that the wine comes off a little bitter. The Milk Duds is a better pairing. So, let's just real quick just because I kind of expected these candies to be really good with, with the cab anyway. The Ghirardelli, that's really good candy too. Even with the almonds, and I'm not really a fan of nuts in my, in my food or my candy, but it works. Yeah, not so much. It's better with the Pinot. And then the Brookside, a little pomegranate. This one, this one might go. And you know, the, because this wine is actually kind of sweet or fruit forward, and the Pinot isn't as fruit forward, the nuttiness and the bitterness of the nuts of the almonds actually works better with the Pinot. So yeah. This, this combination works. In some ways, milk dud down. In some ways, this pairing of candies and that wine is definitely a better pairing. This one, really, you probably need some like pork, but the candy's really delicious. Okay, so as a backup for the candies, I picked up the Tootsie Roll Child's Play Mega Pack of candy. Basically lots of Tootsie Rolls in various sizes and flavors, along with Tootsie Pops and Dots. I paid $8.58 for it. So the most expensive candy, but you get a ton of it. I really got it because I like Tootsie Rolls. Dad likes Dots. I told him he couldn't eat all the Dots though. So I had to go get another wine glass. So we're just gonna do a basic pairing of the Tootsie Roll with the Cab, and I'll do the Dots with the white wine. And I got this really just in case like the, the other stuff didn't work. Really for the dots, honestly, because I think the dots will be a good pairing with the white wine. Milk Duds and Tootsie Rolls are pretty much my favorite candies. It works, but honestly the Milk Dud Milk does is a little bit, is actually a better pairing for everything. I guess I should have put the 667 there. <clears throat> so let's, let's get a swig of the white wine real quick. That's plenty. I know you probably can't really see this on camera very well, but I need my, I need room over here. I won't go through all the, what all the colors and the flavors are supposed to be. So we'll just get a collection of dots. Here we go. It works. I mean, it's lemon, probably cherry and lime or green apple. Kind of like the gummy bear. The red isn't necessarily the best pairing.
Honestly, the Dots is not a really good pairing. The other two candies are a better pairing because the Dots are actually too sweet. The lemon is okay. The green apple, the green one, really makes the wine taste pretty bitter. And the cherry or red one just completely conflicts with the flavors of the wine. Okay, so that is the show. Uh, some value price wines here and some really cool candy. Some of them are a little fancy. I hope you have a fun and safe Halloween. Just be safe. Try to be smart. I know you're going to want to have parties. You're going to want to go out trick-or-treating maybe. You're going to, you know, at least the kids and go with them. As adults, you might want to go to nightclubs and bars that might be open and do costume contests and all that. I just want to have a little fun. I was a little bit conflicted about whether I should do a Halloween episode since I'm the Grim Reaper in this episode. But, you know, let's take this head on. We are dealing through dealing with some pretty, pretty intense things right now. But you know what? We'll get through it. Just be safe and uh, be smart and have a good time. It's okay to stay at home this year for Halloween. Like I said, watch some scary movies. Maybe you have some really close friends that you know have been safe and have been practicing social distancing. Or maybe your family wants to get together and watch something like Beetlejuice, which is fun and really hilarious. Actually, it's a really great movie. I watched it recently. Or you want to watch something a little more racy. Maybe you and your partner or maybe a couple people that maybe you have a group of people that live together. You want to watch Rocky Horror. You want to act out Rocky Horror. Whatever it is, have some fun. Get some cool wines. These, all three of these wines are totally fine. My favorite of the group, probably the Cab. Um, but get some inexpensive wines, have a good time, get some cool candies, get some popcorn, maybe get some food, pair it with the wines, and just relax. You don't have to ball out this year for Halloween. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you had a good time. I had a good time. And we'll see everyone again <laughs> next time. <laughs> Ha 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 